Okay, WWE Bad Blood. Insert Taylor Swift reference here. Uh, just wrapped up, give or take, about 20 minutes or so ago. Um, overall, uh, interesting show. Um, had a few slow points in it that I think kind of hold it back from being a great show, unfortunately. Um, but uh, we started off right off with a biggie. Uh, it's the Hell in a Cell match between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. Uh, right off the bat, McIntyre dominated the early portion of this match. He threw Punk uh, into the turnbuckles. They got outside the ring. Uh, McIntyre got a quick Claymore kick. Got a toolbox out from under the ring. Uh, Punk had actually gotten a table out from under the ring at one point. Uh, they fought, like I said, uh, they were on the outside of the ring. Uh, McIntyre hit a Claymore kick and then lawn darted Punk into the uh, cage wall. Uh, as that happened, he got a toolbox out. Uh, attacked Punk with a wrench. Um, they got back into the match, uh, tried to, McIntyre tried to set up the table, but the legs broke off. I do not know if this was intentional or not, so, uh, they fought briefly over the legs. Uh, McIntyre got dropped toe hold, uh, got hit with a drop toe hold onto the table, which was laying sideways at the time. Um, and then, uh, Punk got the wrench, he hit a quick go TS, uh, GTS, go to sleep. Uh, but sent McIntyre out of the ring. McIntyre hit another Claymore. Punk countered a Claymore into a sharpshooter. Uh, McIntyre grabbed the wrench and fought back with it on Punk to get out of it. Punk locked around in a count of vice. Again, McIntyre fought back with the wrench. McIntyre hit a white noise on the ring steps. At one point, uh, they were fighting on the ring apron and uh, McIntyre suplexed Punk over the turnbuckle corner into a table set up on the outside of the ring. Uh, he tried to, uh, McIntyre tried to get the ring steps on the outside, in, into the ring, and uh, apparently he hurt his back just a little too much because it was a little hard. He had to set up one of the other ring steps to pick up the other ring steps to get them level with the ring ropes so they could slide underneath them. Uh, they fought back into it. Uh, at one point, uh, McIntyre got a low blow, grabbed what looked like to be a sack of thumbtacks, but reality it was a slap, uh, sack of the uh, friendship bracelet beads. He poured those over Punk, uh, he went for the claim where Punk just dodged it, uh, McIntyre flew into the ring steps, uh, there was a chain in the toolbox, Punk took the chain, wrapped that around his leg, uh, so that he could hit the GTS with the chain, with McIntyre's head going onto the chain, uh, and get the three count in the victory, uh, afterwards Punk, uh, stumbled out and collapsed on the entryway, uh, both men were completely exhausted. Uh, Punk fought off help, just wanting to talk to his wife on the phone, uh, saluted the crowd, and yeah, that's pretty much how that ended. Uh, overall, really good match. Uh, as well as, man, I hope they didn't completely burn the crowd out because it, it really was that intense. And it, it looked like it could have gone either way through the whole thing. Uh, there were several points where, like I, swear, like I said, it could have easily gone Drew McIntyre's way and I would not have been surprised. Uh, again, try to get McIntyre some momentum and maybe get back into the world title picture here. I mean, the problem is, again, Volter's not a baby face, but still, you know, again, like something where you could keep him up there. Uh, but again, I guess now we need to start pushing Punk into an eventual program with Volter. I don't know when that will be exactly, but yeah, I think that's got to be the next big step there. All right, our next match is the women's championship match between Nia Jax and Bayley. Uh, right off the bat, uh, Nia Jax dominated the early portion. She got a quick avalanche in the corner, locked on a bear hug. At one point, she uh, looked locked on what looked like to be a heel hook and then kind of turned into a half grab, which a uh, surprising amount of submission work there from uh, Nia Jax. Bayley did come back to a quick leg drop through the ropes. She had a baseball slide drop kick. Uh, Bailey tried to sucker Nia into uh, getting hit with the super power bomb, but uh, Nia fought out of that, attempted to basically do uh, something of a head scissors type maneuver. Uh, didn't quite get the full rotation, and so Bailey just kind of got thrown a little bit to the side. But then uh, Nia came back and hit a belly to belly suplex on Bailey, or in other words, a Bailey to belly. Uh, they began have, fighting a little bit. Um, at one point, there was a Samoan drop. I think what was supposed to happen is Bailey's supposed to counter a Samoan drop into either a crucifix or some type of head scissors esque maneuver, but 
I don't think she got quite high enough to, uh, to maneuver her legs into the right position, so they had to turn into an ordinary Samoan drop, and in the process, the, ref the referee, Dr Jessica Carr, uh, got taken out. Uh, Tiffany's mu uh, Tiffany Stratton's music hits. She runs down to the ring, attacks Bailey with the briefcase, you know, briefly drops it just as Jessica Carr is starting to revive, and so Carr picks up the briefcase and is looking at Tiff at Stratton. And as this is happening, Nia Jax looks up and sees what appears to be Tiffany Stratton cashing in, which it doesn't quite look like. An argument breaks out. It looks like Bailey's going to get a quick roll-up victory, but that does not happen. Bailey uh, hits a maneuver, starts to go for a top rope elbow drop. Tiffany Stratton throws the briefcase at her, which provides enough of a distraction for Jax to hit a super Samoan drop and then the Annihilator for the three count on the victory. Uh, again, really fun match. Really well done, well paced. Uh, I think they timed the run in just right. Uh, I do like the, you know, was Tiffany going to cash in or not? It seemed to me more like not. Uh, she, I mean, she ran in, she directly attacked Bailey. She you know, was not intending to, uh, she did not try to revive the ref at any point. Uh, and again, the ref revived on her own. And, you know, the box, the briefcase just happened to be sitting next to her as she picked it up. So, yeah, again, it's like, I don't think, yeah, she, Tiffany put uh, the briefcase down. So, I don't think she was intending to cash in, but it's going to, Feed the paranoia into Nia Jax's mind, so I wonder if we might get like an advanced cash in, where Nia gets sick of Tiffany, she attacks, and Tiffany basically says, "You know what? I'm cashing in, you know, yeah, at now or something like that, yeah, or maybe at the end of the, or something to that effect, where she says, "I'm going to cash in at this point, and that's you know now you don't have to worry about it." I'm not saying that's exactly what's going to happen, but I, I do wonder if that's maybe where they're going to go, if they're going or she'll cash in the opportune moment. Alright, our next match after this is Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. Uh, the rest of Judgment Day were staying in the back. They weren't going to get involved. I'm sure you all believe that. Um, right off the bat, uh, Priest shrugged off a chop from Balor and hit a big forearm. Uh, Priest kicked Balor off the apron. Balor came back in a sling blade on the outside of the ring. Uh, I think he went for the 1917, but uh, Priest followed that, hit a falcon arrow. Uh, Priest countered a maneuver off the top ropes with a big punch. Seemed to hurt his hand in the process. Uh, Ballard hit another sling blade, but then Priest countered uh, the shotgun drop kick. Uh, Ballard came back in a Pele kick. Priest hit a razor's edge. Uh, at this point, what well, I'm sure is going to be a big shock to you, Judgment Day hit the ring. Um, and interfered, distracted the ref. Enabling uh, Balor to hit a coup de gras, but only got a two count. Uh, Balor went for two more coups de gras, went for a third, but Priest managed to dodge that into the South Heaven choke slam for the three count of victory. Yeah, um, this match was not great. Um, <laughs> I think it, it could have been better. There was a lot of room for improvement. The ending felt a little rushed and clunky because of that. Uh, Balor was not moving. Uh, sweetly in the ring that mile, and like when he was hitting the uh, the coups de gras, you know he was he missed one of them completely. I just it, he barely like grazed Priest on the way down. This is supposed to look like an effective finisher, and yeah, like I said, you had the punch thing earlier that I don't know if that was necessarily supposed to be the th case that happened, but it just again it got way too convoluted and clunky towards the end. I guess it's nice the Priest won. I don't know if this means he's going to move on or not. Uh, hopefully he does. I, I, you know, this has run its course. Um, I just, you know, the, I think the Judgment Day itself is starting to run its course because it doesn't make sense that Balor feels betrayed by Priest because the Judgment Day wasn't supposed to have a leader and then immediately starts acting like a leader. And I don't buy this as a cohesive group at all. I know they won the tag team championships, but after that, it's just like, again, it just isn't clicking. It just, it seems to be falling very flat.
Okay, so uh, in between matches here, Triple H came out for a big announcement. Uh, he talked about it. It's been 30 years since he was terrorizing in WCW and actually lived in Atlanta. Uh, and then uh, he talked about a big thing that the big announcement is uh, uh, related to Crown Jewel. Yeah, he had to ignore the booze. Um, no one cares about Crown Jewel. Uh, but in this case, it's an interesting idea. Uh, basically, the champions of each brand, uh, the world champions, the top men's and women's champions will face each other in matches, basically. Uh, the SmackDown Women's Champion will face the Raw Women's Champion. The SmackDown Women's that's what's going to happen. And the winners will be crowned the Crown Jewel Champions. Which, you know, has its own belt, but yeah, other than that, it's not that interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea, I guess, but it's not a unification. It's probably going to be one of those... Only counts in Saudi Arabia deals, and we're never really probably going to hear about it again. Uh, Volter does come out. He points out, you know, hey, I want King of the Ring in Saudi Arabia. Now I'm itching to do this, something like this again. This is a great idea. And then uh, he spots Goldberg sitting in the crowd, taunts him, uh, you know, mocks him over last week, calls him overrated. Goldberg comes out. It provides this big distraction for Sami Zayn to start attacking Volter, and uh, that's. All that happened. Um, so yeah, uh, like I said, it's not a terrible idea. I'm, I'm not covering Ground Jewel in case you're wondering. Uh, if you are new here, uh, I covered the first two Saudi shows and they were both absolutely horrendous. In particular, uh, the second one, which was the first Crown Jewel. Uh, if you want to see me be the closest to cliched, shouty, angry YouTube guy, that is it. Um, I was not happy about that show, and uh, pretty much no one else was. Um, and then the one before that was Greatest Royal Rumble, and that one was just bad because uh, the stream just kept crashing over and over and over again. It just kept tacking more and more time onto itself, and I got really upset. And that was just after WrestleMania, and the same thing had happened. And so I was really on edge as to... Yeah, uh, did not really wanting to go through stuff like that again. Uh, anyway, uh, our next match was the Shark Cage Women's World Championship match. Uh, Dominic Mysterio is in a Shark Cage. Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. Uh, also, the cage is supposed to be elevated in the air because Dominic is also afraid of heights. Ripley grabbed the mic to uh, officially in uh, yeah, initiate that. Uh, right off the bell, Ripley jumped Morgan, hit a couple big drop kicks. Ripley sent Morgan from the ring apron over Morgan, came back, hit a dragon screw leg whip through the ropes. She hit uh, a sunset bomb into the barricade. Uh, Ripley hit a uh, ripcord into a Northern Knights suplex. Um, as this was happening, Dominic apparently uh, produced a key and managed to pick the lock. To the cage however it's still way up in the air so it's still not very effective but it is providing a little bit of a distraction as Ripley starts to come back she rolls out of an oblivion uh, however Morgan managed to counter a riptide into her new maneuver the home wrecker which is that uh, pump handle flip sunset flip maneuver that uh, a lot of people have really liked uh, Ripley came back hit a razor's edge as the K like I said Dom slips out of the cage, and I'm guessing it's supposed to be the chain the key was attached to got wrapped around something, and it's holding him in place. And as uh, Ripley hits the riptide on the outside of the ring, she elects to just put Lid back in, breaks the count to start her over so that she can get a kendo stick and attack Dom with it. Uh, as this is happening, Raquel Rodriguez comes out of the crowd uh, and attacks Rhea Ripley, causing the DQ. Uh, she then proceeds to get Ripley into the ring, uh, hits her with the Tejana Bomb, and pulls Morgan on top of her. However, none of that matters because the match was already over. Um, I wonder if they bungled this. <laughs> Again, it seems to me like if you're going to pull that, like, that was supposed to be the end of the match, was you know, uh, Rodriguez attacking Ripley and then uh, pulling Morgan on top. However, 
again, the match got called a DQ. This is where it fell apart. Uh, I was not high on this match going into it. I I thought this should have been an Hell in a Cell match. Uh, the shark, like the second I heard Shark Cage, like, well, pfft, yeah, Liv's gonna win because the Shark Cage is the least effective uh, deterrent in pretty much all of wrestling. Like every other one works so much better than the Shark Cage does. It's just you know the idea of ah, oh, they're afraid of heights and they're up in the air and that's about it. Uh, you know, like I said, it's just kind of disappointing overall. And that leads us into our final match of the night, the tag team match between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns against the bloodline of Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu. Uh, early on, there was a little audio hiccup during the intros where they played Cody's uh, wrestling has only one, has more than one royal family line uh, twice as the uh, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff band played him down to the ring. Uh, early on, Solo taunted Reigns with the Ula Fala as Rhodes and Reigns argued over who got to start the match. Ultimately, Cody won out. Uh, he hit Jacob Fatu with a disaster kick, but Fatu completely no-sold it. Uh, Reigns tagged in. He hit the ten punches, corner punches on Solo. Uh, Fatu distracted Reigns along Solo to get in uh, back into the fight. Uh, Reigns dodged a Fatu splash and then uh, threw uh, Fatu out of the ring. Rhodes got a big tag and a power slam on Solo. Uh, Solo broke up a crossroads on Fat 2, uh, and hit a pop-up Samoan drop. Solo then hit a urinagi on the ring apron on Cody. Uh, Fat 2 bit Cody's hand, break, and then uh, broke up a hot tag to Roman by pulling Reigns off the apron. Uh, Rhodes managed to slam Fat 2 into the uh, timekeeper's area and then uh, bounced his head off a chair before ultimately laying him on the announce table and hitting a splash from the ring post. Uh, Reigns hit a Superman punch on Solo. He went for the spear, uh, but Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa hit the ring, uh, began distracting the ref that enabled Solo to hit a spear. Uh, they kind of started to gang up. They are preparing for a big move, and then in the background you suddenly see this guy in a mask and a hoodie uh, standing in between the Tongans. And he super kicks both of them and reveals that he is Jimmy Uso uh, coming to Roman Reigns' aid. He, uh, he basically says, he tells Roman, I got you. Roman uh, hits Solo with the spear, covers him for the three count of the victory. Uh, Reigns and Jimmy embrace. They acknowledge Cody. Uh, they then prepare to leave. However, the bloodline hits the ring again and attacks Cody. Jimmy looks at Roma at Reigns and says, Hey man, you gave him your word. I'm with you no matter what you decide to do. And Reigns elects to head back into the ring. They go in, they clear it out. Reigns hands over the championship belt again, looks at it. You know, again, they kind of acknowledge each other. And they, at that moment, the Rock's music hits. And, uh, you know, he comes out. He gives a one, two, he starts to do the uh, the acknowledgement of Roman Reigns, but then he does two, three, and then kind of a throat slashing maneuver and walks off. The end. Um, overall, I, this was a fun match. I think it was well done. Um, the ending was a little... <laughs> I, I love the Jimmy Uso reveal. Like I said, the way they set that up, where no one notices this one guy is standing in the middle of everything. Until the last possible second, and it's like, hmm, I don't think that's Jay Uso. Cause it's like, it's got to be an Uso, obviously. Is it Jay, or is it possibly Jimmy? Yeah, because, you know, remember the bloodline attacked Jimmy to kick him out. Uh, Solo's bloodline, that is. Uh, that being said, <laughs> and the rock pit, yeah, that, that just didn't work. And, and I know I've been hard on the rock thing, but in this case, again, like, you know, if he can't hit the ring and do anything, having him stand at the top and then just walk off, yeah, that doesn't, <laughs> that just looks lazy. <laughs> if you're going to do something like that, have it be later in the, have it be during the match, at least. Don't have it, or have it be afterwards. Or have him look like maybe he is going to come and help Roman, but then walk off. That would have worked better. All of that would have worked better than him just standing at the top of the entrance ramp. Uh, it just, 
I mean, ramp is a bit of a misnomer. It was a straight line in the ring, but anyway. Uh, yeah, it, that just, again, it kind of fell apart. Unfortunately, that's what I think held this show back, is, again, very clunky, misheld endings, uh, mishandled endings, like, I mentioned uh, the women's champion, the shark cage match. I thought again it was clunky. Uh, the SmackDown women's match, I like. I said I loved. It had a few problems in, here and there. So again, it is the things, that, the negative parts that kind of keep piling up. Like I said, I, I wish they would just add another match. Six matches could have helped. Like again, I know we're you know maybe not Jey Uso and yeah you know. <laughs> uh, 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 Xavier Woods for the IC belt, which, yeah, that happened. Um, Braun Breaker won it and then seemed to almost immediately drop it. Uh, I mean, it was a little more than a month, but yeah. Again, like, I don't, like, I guess now they're planting the seeds for him to go after Volter, too. So, again, like, you know, why not have Volter and Sami Zayn? Why not have a tag team championship match? Again, exactly. Like, we still have never had those. We have not had those since. Uh, good lord! <laughs> like the women's tag team championships have been defended. But I don't think any of the men's have. Have they? I can't remember. Uh, I mean, not since Mania. You know, you split them up, and now again, you have not done anything with them. They've changed hands. Uh, yeah, once on the Raw side. Twice on the SmackDown side, both on SmackDown, and not on the premium live events. Like, could you maybe do one of them, please? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, basically, yeah, that's, yeah, so like I said, overall, it was enjoyable. It was not a terrible show by any stretch of the imagination. I had a lot of fun watching it. You know, just, again, the, the negatives were just that glaring that it did lessen my enjoyment of the show. I am going to be giving uh, Bad, uh, WWE Bad Blood 94, uh, 94, wow, <laughs> uh, I don't think that happened, um, anyway, uh, WWE Bad Blood 2024 a B. Like I said, overall fun, but again, too many imperfections to give me a full, let me give a full recommendation. Okay, so the next video is going to be uh, the football predictions for next week. Uh, I've almost got all of the, the dwindle. I don't think I do. <laughs> um, today was a busy day. Um, and, uh, so I haven't quite gotten the video game footage captured. I'm in the early scripting stages on the random trade review. So again, I, I'm, I'm hoping that will be up on Friday. Uh, and then hopefully I can do, uh, I'll be doing AEW Wrestle Dream this week, uh, next weekend. Uh, so that's the video layout. Um, like I said, I plan on doing Agatha all along as a whole show. I think we're only partway through. I don't think we're at the finale yet, are we? Oh, I, I don't know. These things are always catching me in the weirdest spots. Uh, uh, like I said, I've had a busy week. Uh, hopefully everything settles down now. Uh, yeah, so uh, see you all next time. Hey guys, remember you can help me maintain and possibly even expand my professional wrestling coverage by supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for camp productions. Also, remember to like the video, comment, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell.